Yes, I would also like to address as announcements uh, that I personally do find it very hard to understand after being here for 14 years on the Board of Selectmen, I have never seen a governor or any state official call a meeting at the very last minute and not give notice to the board. Uh, I've seen them this year call different meetings they've had and have them on Monday night when we're actually meeting. So, I mean, I just don't understand why this is happening. I got the emails when I was out of the country having planned my vacation over a year ago. And what am I, you know, although I might have even tried to get out of and lost my $10,000 so I could have a say. Uh, and I took it as an affront. I don't know if he's talking about me or Phil because I wasn't there. But uh, just because he lives one town away, he could come over here anytime he wants. I can understand why, why the employees that work um, uh, for the different DOT or whoever, why they can't meet because we have a quorum and they don't and they ha can't make decisions. But I think the governor probably can make a decision. And I think for him to call a visit like this at the last minute, I mean, in Hampton, it's always been considered that if you have a meeting in January or February when nobody's around, that you're trying to pull something fast. That's the way it's always been all 55 years that I've lived here. And to me, you know, yeah, a lot of people showed up because of the flooding and stuff. And I applaud him for coming. I applaud him. Uh, I think I'm the first one that mentioned it when, right after he was elected. He, he, uh, when there was an article about the lawsuit that was in the newspaper, he stated way back then, at the very end of uh, one of the articles in the Hampton Union, that um, he was in favor of something happening. And I brought that up here at this table. And now he still feels the same way. But at the last Hampton Area Commission, where I've been on it for, this is my 10th year, uh, being there, I was attacked personally by every person there except the state employees and with the exception of Chuck Rage also. He said, yeah, we have to all work together. And I feel like we all have to work together. But I sat there and took a hit from every one of the other people, starting with Bobby Preston. Uh, we are the ones that have put our name up and run for office. And I have been elected five times and I have won I've run unopposed numerous times, and I've come in first and beat by a large majority, and I have a lot of support, and I'm here to represent the people. And I find it outrageous that there would be a meeting without a prior notice, that he can just call up at the last minute. Uh, even Craig Benson would show up and uh, come to the Board of Selectmen's meeting. The, uh, and then to sit there and let John Nye in um, make all his comments when he's not an elected official. He was the chairman of the Hampton Area Commission, and that night he stated that he was stepping down because he could no longer take the direction of the Board of Selectmen, which we as a Board of Selectmen, and everyone sitting here knows it, never once gave him any, um, any direction. And then he turns around, and I hear he's getting paid $80,000 for the job that he's got, and that's why he stepped down to become president of the Chamber of Commerce. It's ridiculous. And to me, the, I have been the biggest supporter of all business people all 14 years that I've been here. I've fought for the trash and everything else for them. I've done everything I could for the business community as well as everyone else. I've tried to make it very balanced. And as being here this many years, <clears throat> I have learned how you do have to balance it, but we elected officials are here to uh, represent the citizens of Hampton. And for him to be sitting there, and he gave a lot more respect to the Hampton Village District, which is wonderful. But you know, essentially, the Hampton Village District is in charge of um, entertainment, the fireworks. We here set the policies for the town of Hampton, both in Hampton Beach and here. And I, yeah, I think it's great that the governor comes out with some, hopefully, what he'll be able to do, because it is his responsibility and the federal government's responsibility <coughs> to do something about this flooding that's happening. There's very little, really, that I think the town can do, although I think the town, if people vote for this Warren article that's out there, we need to figure out what can be done and what can we offer 
uh, help them get financing to raise their houses or whatever has to be done. But, uh, th uh, and then I hear that um, Mr. Uh, Sal, that has the new owner of the casino, he finally shows up after six years, having been invited by the Hampton Beach Area Commission for at least 12 months in a row, never showed up for one meeting, never accepted anything. He did accept, I think, twice, and his mother passed away, and I don't blame him for not being there that night, but then he accepted again, and he didn't come up. Yeah, I think he was there. I think he wants to get some public funding, like they're getting at the Mount Washington Hotel, like they're getting at the Balsams. But we here in Hampton need to get some of the money back that we deserve. And, you know, I, I think I've brought on for talking for 14 years about the problems with the drainage. I think a lot of people have misconstrued that I was complaining about the flooding. I haven't been. I'm only complaining about the drains that do not work. And they haven't worked for more than 10 years. I've owned my property for 55 years, and it's only been the last 10 to 12 years that I cannot use my front door because uh, whenever it only takes a, a downpour, granted it does eventually go away after 20 minutes, but I can't have my clients getting sprayed down by cars. And uh, it's not just my clients either. It's all the people that are tourists that are walking up and down the road. They have to, they have to, I see baby carriages all the time in the fast lane trying to get around the puddle or uh, just going through the puddle. It's ridiculous. The lady that lives next door to me, I don't have the damage that she has. She's 82 years old and now she'd like to sell her house. And I think it's a crime that that woman is going to, when she does sell, and, or her children sell after she passes on, that she's not going to get what she has coming to her after owning that house for over 30 years. People don't like to complain. It's our responsibility here at this table to stand up for the taxpayers, and the taxpayers of Hampton are not being dealt with fairly. And I think the governor realizes that. And I think now he realizes with this flooding that just happened, I definitely would have stayed home for the meeting if I would have known that I would needed to watch my property too. Uh, but that just wasn't the case, you know. Um, and I would always be there if I possibly could. But for him to drop a, a, a thing like this at the last minute and for John Nyan, who's with the Chamber of Commerce, to get up there and get to say whatever he wants and even the Hampton <coughs> Village District, when the Board of Selectmen doesn't even get invited. They just drop a notice at the last moment. They make no communications. They never try to talk to Fred. And I feel that somebody either, I hope it isn't at this table, but somebody, whether it's on the Hampton Area Commission, somebody invited him to come down there knowing that there weren't going to be a lot of selectmen there. And I think that's wrong. And I can't prove it, but I think it's a cheap shot. I think it obviously was a media blitz and I, to me, it's just wrong. I'd like to see him come here and address us, treat us like normal. We, he's missing his dinner with his kids. What does he think happens here? We don't even get dinner every Monday night for 14 years. And let me tell you, it's not just one meeting that we all put in. And we spend a lot of time preparing, and I don't think we're given um, the respect that we should. And I'd like to say to everybody at the Hampton Area Commission that f was so down on the fact that we would even bring up this conversation, at least he has shown some interest. So that alone proves it's right. And that same sentiment is voiced in the editorial that's in the Hampton Union today. And um, I don't know. I, I think if this is just something that shouldn't be. And before they start dishing out money to the uh, Mount Washington Hotel, the balsams, I would love to see the casino get money, but I'd like to see them get it after we get our share. Thank you.